Doug, um, with my sister Shushana, who just was singing that song. That was a recording of her song, Are You Teachable? And that song we chose for today to transition to the study. Um, that is going to be a book by book, chapter by chapter study, as we talked about last Shabbat. We're going to start doing um, this is the book of First Baruch. I will be having it on the share screen from my computer on WordPad here. And so I will be start the reading here. So this is a restored name version of the book of Baruch, of the first book of Baruch. So here we go. And there, there's one or two words that um, Kohanim, just for people that don't know about the Hebrew, that means priest, the high priest. Um, so just, just trying to let you know there, there might be some words that um, people that read English Bibles that are listening in and watching us might be uh they might not know about and i might have to explain it and stop so but here we go first book of baruch chapter one and these are the words of the book which baruch the son of neriah so he's the son of neriah the son of mashiah and the son of zedekiah and the son of hasadiah and the son of hilkiah wrote in babylon so you're giving his whole genealogy here in the first verse, and obviously he wrote it in Babylon. So he was one of the captives in the 70 years in Babylon that the Yahudim went captive. So verse 2, in the fifth year, the seventh day of the month, what time as the Chaldeans took um, Jerusalem and burnt it with fire. So in the fifth year on the seventh day of the month was the exact day that they took Jerusalem and burnt it with fire. And Baruch did read the words of this book in the hearing of Yachaniah, son of Yehoiakim, king of Yahuda, and in the ears of all the people that came to hear the book. 
And in the hearing of the nobles and of the king's sons and in the hearing of the elders and of all the people from the lowest unto the highest, even of all them that dwelt at Babylon by the river Sud. So you have, there was a hearing basically that you got all the nobles, all the kings, all the descendants of the king and all the elders and all the people from the greatest to least, all them that dwelt in Babylon, there was a hearing, like a meeting. Um, whereupon they wept, fasted, and prayed before Yahuwah. They made also a collection of money according to every man's power. And they sent it to Yerushalam, unto Yahuwahim, the high Kohen, so the high priest, the son of Hilkiah, son of Shalom, and to the Kohanim, and to all the people which were found with him at Jerusalem, or at Yerushalam, it's actually more correct. At the same time when he received the vessels of the house of Yahuwah that were carried out of the tabernacle to return them in the land of Yehuda, the tenth day of the month, uh, Sivan, namely, Silver vessels, which Zedekiah, the son of Yoshia, king of Yehuda, had made. After Nebuchadnezzar, after that, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had carried away Yachaniah. Let me just fix this here. I should say Yachaniah. Okay. And the princes and the captives and the mighty men and the people of the land from Jerusalem brought them unto Babylon. And they said, Behold, we have sent you money to buy you burnt offerings and sin offerings and incense and prepare you a grain offering and offer upon the altar of Yahuwah our Almighty. So they're actually giving money to buy animals to be sacrificed, basically. They gave them money, free will, you know, out of out of the kindness of their heart. They're giving money. They're giving um, money to be able to buy animals to sacrifice to Yahuwah, basically and also for crops to be sacrificed as grain offerings. Um, verse 11 here, and pray for the life of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, for the life of Belshazzar, his son. So this is interesting. Baruch tells you that Belshazzar, the second king that Daniel serves in the book of Daniel, was actually the direct son of Nebuchadnezzar. It's kind of interesting that their days may be upon the earth as the days of heaven. Interesting. And Yahuwah will give us strength and lighten our eyes, meaning giving us understanding. Um, and we shall live under the shadow of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and under the shadow of Belshazzar, his son. And we shall serve them many days and find favor in their sight. Pray for us also. Unto Yahuwah, our Almighty, for we have sinned against Yahuwah, our Almighty. And unto this day, the fury of Yahuwah and his wrath is not turned from us. And you shall read this book, which we have sent unto you to make confession in the house of Yahuwah unto the feast and solemn days. And you shall say to Yahuwah, our Almighty belongs righteousness, but unto us the confusion of faces as it is come to pass this day. Unto them of Yehuda and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and to our kings and to our princes and to our Kohanim and to our prophets and to our fathers. For we have sinned before Yahuwah and disobeyed him and have not hearkened unto the voice of Yahuwah, our Almighty to walk in the commandments that he gave us openly. Since the day that Yahuwah brought our forefathers out of the land of Egypt, unto this present day we have been disobedient unto Yahuwah our Almighty, and we have been negligent in not hearing his voice. Wherefore the evils cleaved unto us, and the curse. So they're actually quoting from Deuteronomy here. And since Baruch is the guy described writing this, he's the one quoting from Deuteronomy, and I believe it's Deuteronomy 28 where you get the, the barakas and the curses. So this is him quoting from it, and it's very similar to how the book of Daniel starts, actually. So it's very interesting. Wherefore the evils cleave unto us, and the curse which Yahuwah appointed to Masha, which 
that's the Hebrew original Hebrew name for Moshe Moses his servant at the time that he brought our fathers out of the land of Egypt to give us a land that flows with milk and honey like as it is to see this day nevertheless we have not hearkened unto the voice of Yahuwah, our Almighty, according to all the words of the prophets whom he sent unto us. But every man followed the imagination of his own wicked heart to serve strange deities. And deity is just a Greek word for like mighty one, you know, a object of worship. So basically to strange Allahim and to do evil in the sight of Yahuwah, our Almighty. So basically, this is Baruch pretty much repenting. He's writing this book and lamenting and repenting for all they've done against Yahuwah. They transgressed against Yahuwah, against his covenant. And he's saying that what has happened, what has befallen them, is because of the curses, because they have forsaken Yahuwah and served strange mighty ones, to put it in a summary. Um, Sounds a lot like today, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So, um, Sister Shushana, if you may, um, unless you have anything else you want to add for Chapter 1, I was going to ask you to read Chapter 2. I will. I just wanted to add that um, I don't understand why anyone would want to disobey our Creator because his commandments are not grievous. They're for our good. And it feels good to be able to do them. It's, I don't understand why people don't want to do them. And that's about all I wanted to say in the comment. Um, if Dennis and Sally have anything to say, Say it now before I start reading. <clears throat> yeah, the natural heart of man is at, at enmity with Yahuwah. It sure is. I guess uh, in order to be called, you, you're called away from that natural pull, which is, is a good thing, a tube thing. And speaking of that word, tube means good, and I'm about to read it. Uh, starting with first Baruch chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore, Yahuwah has made Tub his word, which he pronounced against us and against our judges that judged Yasrael, and against our kings and against our princes and against the men of Yasrael and Yehuda, to bring upon us great plagues such as never happened under the whole heaven, as it came to pass in Jerusalem, according to the things that were written in the Torah of Masha, that a man should eat the flesh of his own son and the flesh of his own daughter. How terrible. Moreover, he has delivered them to be in subjection to all the kingdoms that are round about us, to be as a re and desolation among all the people round about where Yahuwah has scattered them. Thus we were cast down and not exalted because we have sinned against Yahuwah, our Almighty, and have not been obedient unto his voice. To Yahuwah, our Almighty, appertains righteousness. But unto us and to our fathers open shame, it appear, as appears this day. All For all these plagues have come upon us, which Yahuwah has pronounced against us. Yet have we not prayed before Yahuwah that we might turn everyone from the imaginations of his wicked heart. Wherefore Yahuwah watched over us for evil, and Yahuwah has brought it upon us. For Yahuwah is righteous in all his works, which he has commanded us. Yet we have not hearkened unto his voice to walk in the commandments of Yahuwah that he set before us. And now, O Yahuwah, the Almighty of Yisrael, that has brought your people out of the land of Egypt 
with a mighty hand and a high arm with high and with signs and with wonders and with great power and have gotten yourself a name as appears this day O yahuwah our almighty we have sinned we have done wickedly we have dealt unrighteously in all your ordinances let your wrath turn from us for we are but a few left among the heathen where you have scattered us Hear our prayers, O Yahweh, and our petitions, and deliver us for your own sake, and give us favor in the sight of them which have led us, led us away, that all the earth may know that you are Yahuwah, our Almighty, because Yasrael and his posterity called by your name, O Yahuwah, Look down from your Kadash house and consider us. Bow down your ear, O Yahuwah, to hear us. Open your eyes and behold, for the dead that are in the graves, whose souls are taken from their bodies, will give unto Yahuwah neither praise nor righteousness, but the being that is greatly vexed, which goes stooping and feeble, and the eyes that fail and the hungry spirit will give you praise and righteousness and righteousness, O Yahuwah. Therefore, do not make our humble supplication before you. We do not make our humble supplication before you, O Yahuwah, our Almighty, for the righteousness of our fathers and of our kings. For you have sent out your wrath and the indignation upon us, as you have spoken by your servants, the prophets, saying, Thus says Yahuwah, bow down your, soul, your shoulders to serve the king of Babylon. So shall you remain in the land that I gave you unto your fathers. But if you will not hear the voice of Yahuwah to serve the king of Babylon, I will cause to cease out of the cities of Yehuda and from without Jerusalem the voice of mirth and the voice of joy, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, and the whole land shall be desolate of inhabitants. But we would not hearken unto your voice to serve the king of Babylon. Therefore have you made too the words that you spoke by your servants, the prophets, namely that the bones of our kings and the bones of our fathers should be taken out of their place. And lo, they are cast out to the heat of the day and to the frost of the night. And they died in great miseries by famine, by sword, and by pestilence. And the house which is called by your name have you laid waste, as it is to be seen this day. For the wickedness of the house of Yisrael and the house of Yehuda. O Yahuwah, our Almighty, you have dealt with us, after all, your, your tomb, and according to all that great mercy of yours. As you spoke by your servant Masha in the day when you did command him to write the Torah before the children of Yisrael, saying, If you will not hear my voice, surely this very great multitude shall be turned into a small number among the nations, where I will scatter them. For I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff-necked people. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves and shall know that I am Yahuwah, their Almighty. For I will give them a heart and ears to hear, and they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name and return from their stiff neck and from their wicked deeds. For they shall remember the way of their fathers, 
which sinned before Yahuwah. And I will bring them again into the land which I promised with an oath unto their fathers, Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. And they shall be stewards of it. And I will increase them, and they shall not be diminished. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them to be their almighty, and they shall be my people. And I will no more drive my people out of Yisrael, the land that I have given them. Wow. Yeah, there's definitely a lot to talk about here. Um, reference to the new covenant, Jeremiah 31, 31, uh, right at the end here. Um, wow. So this pretty much, this is the, um, what is it called? The regathering of the di diaspora, uh, which you can find in the book of Jeremiah, that there's going to be a greater exodus in the end times. Um, and we can see that it is Yahuwah himself who does this. It's mm -hmm. been, so it has not been done yet, folks. The no. uh, reestablishment of Yahuwah was done by the Rothschilds. It was not done by Yahuwah, but rather his enemies. Mm -hmm. Just so yeah. you know. And uh, the one you just read from verse 31 here reminded me of Ezekiel 36, where it says that um, I will give them a heart and ears to hear. That's very similar to Ezekiel 36, 26 to 27. He will give us a heart um, to cause us to walk in his laws. So very similar to the new covenant here. So he could be, this book could have been referencing the new covenant that is referenced in Ezekiel and Jeremiah. And uh, see here if there's anything else um, that I caught when you were reading. Dealt with us with all your tubeness, um, tore before the children of Yashraal. Um, oh yeah, when it talks about us being in captivity, we will remember all the sins of our fathers and uh, we would think upon his name. I wonder if the <laughs> Original paleo was supposed to be reverence his name. Um, just curious. Oh, because oh, uh, I noticed that the Masoretic text uses that same phrase um, in the book of Malachi, where it talks about a book of remembrance was written for those that feared Yahuwah. And uh, the Masoretic text would say, think upon his name. So I wonder if um, the Hebrew that the Septuagint used in that same verse from Malachi 3.16 says reverence. So I wonder if it's actually supposed to say in the book of Baruch, the original version probably said reverence his name when they're in captivity. So it's just interesting, though, that he's referencing his name, um, that, that they would know his name in captivity, and the Im implication of that could be referring to us. So, just stuff I've noticed prophetically here. Um, and um, I think that's about it. I want to see if Brother Dennis and Sister Sally have anything to add. Um, we're, we are starting to get a l running low on time here. Um, we've got about nine minutes left, but we got enough time for some commentary if you guys want to add anything that um, was brought up or that you caught when we were reading? Yeah, I thought it was interesting that when they were brought over to Babylon to humble them and to see if they would obey the Babylonian king. Mm -hmm. yeah, what's, what's interesting is Nebuchadnezzar is like a type of Yahusha in a way. I know yeah. it's it's weird to say that, but... If you look in the book of Daniel, Daniel's perfect with this time period to read alongside with it. It's actually the same time period. So Daniel's uh, uh, Daniel actually himself called Nebuchadnezzar a, a king of kings. Not the king of kings, but he's called a king of kings, Nebuchadnezzar, by Daniel. So it's almost like how Yosef's a type of messiah and... You have all these guys in the scripture that were supposed to be foreshadowing Yahusha. It's kind of interesting that Nebuchadnezzar has certain qualities that 
uh, it's almost like he was like sort of a type of Yahusha. Um, Nebuchadnezzar was actually put through the ringer by Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. He was uh, turned into a wild beast and he had to eat the grass like the cows and the horses. And um, then when he came to his senses, he praised Yahuwah. Yep. He knew who had done this. Yeah. That that's, that's one of my favorite quotes from the book of Daniel is when he realizes and he gives esteem and splendor and majesty to you who after he was turned into a beast he says uh, anyone that speaks ill of the mighty one the Elohim of daniel um will be thrown into the lion's den will be torn to pieces so i mean he he really esteemed you after that experience that really humbled talking about humbled here that that humbled nebuchadnezzar and he realized it he realized who Yahuwah was. Yahuwah is sovereign to give the kingdoms of the earth to anyone he chooses. So definitely humbled Nebuchadnezzar. But I just noticed that um, Nebuchadnezzar, sometimes there's like little little uh, correlations between him and Yahusha. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar was, was described as a lion when he came in bear siege in Jerusalem. So there's like little little correlations I've seen from my own studies. It's kind of interesting. He, um, he, um, you know, he took them and pretty much they were giving an ultimatum in the book of Jeremiah. That's just another thing I wanted to touch on that Sister Shoshana just read from chapter two, where it was an ultimatum pretty much. Um, go serve Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon and you'll live. You'll have life. Or you're going to go to Egypt where that Pharaoh is in the book of Ezekiel and they, the, the Pharaoh that's actually called the great dragon in Ezekiel 29. And they're like, if you go to Egypt, you flee back to Egypt where you came from, you know, you're going to die. And Yahuwah gave him basically life and death, kind of like Deuteronomy. And he's like, all right, you go to, you go to do, if you obey me and serve this pagan king, you're going to at least have your life physically, have your life. But you go to Egypt and you want to do what's in your wicked heart and keep serving pagan mighty ones. Okay, I'm, I'm going to send uh, Nebuchadnezzar after you and kill you. And that's pretty much what happened in the book of Jeremiah. If you read through the whole book of Jeremiah, eventually, uh, you know, he sends uh, Babylon after them. Those Yahudim that fleed to Egypt. I wonder why anyone would want to serve a foreign mighty one. And this is going to, this whole testing is coming back in this age. We're going right back into that, serving foreign mighty ones because the anti Messiah, this is going to do, he's going to bring all those foreign mighty ones back with him. And you will either serve Yahuwah or you will serve them. And going back into the dark ages. I hope that most of you, especially the ones who are listening to this message, will serve Yahuwah. Thank you. Oh, and so this, to put it in a summary of the first two chapters that Ayn Shushana just read, so you have Baruch lamenting to the father, repenting, talking about all the things they did, going after strange mighty ones. And then chapter two deals more with it, but more of what actually happened with Nebuchadnezzar and all that and the time period they're in. So now they're in this time period where they're in Babylon and all that. And so now they're captives in uh, a land of pagans. Um, and pretty much this chapter also talks about the new covenant. So this, the second chapter deals with future, what's going to happen, you who is going to have mercy on them, even though all they did and all we've done as human beings, he's going to have mercy on us and take us out of our captivity. And so, um, you know, that's how it applies to us. Now we're in captivity right now. America is a type of Babylon, even physically. It's like, uh, it's a it's a it's a type of harlot. So we're right now we're in captivity, and really that's more of a reason why we should be reading books like this and Daniel and figuring out how Daniel lived in captivity, how this guy Baruch lived in captivity. 
So, um, but pretty much second chapter with Shushan I just read also deals with the story too. We get some background here. Um, he goes from the time of them being taken out to Egypt until at this time period when they're in Babylon. So gives you a little bit of a summary here of what's going on. So now they're, they, they realize they've sinned. They're in a point of repentance for at least the people that are being, you know, listed with Baruch here. They're actually repenting. I'm pretty sure some of them, though, weren't repenting, and some of them, you know, probably became like the Babylonians. That's probably where we get our modern Hebrew from. Um, so probably some of them kept being pagan and stuff like that. So anyway, this is that I just wanted to summarize it for everyone, and we're about to get cut off in two minutes. So um, please stay tuned. We're going to be starting Chapter 3 soon, our brother Dennis. Um, when we get back and read chapter, he'll read chapter three for us. So please stay tuned. Thank you for joining us. Um, and Shalom. Let me unmute Dennis. Okay. Shalom. Shalom.